Hello everyone. Once again, thank you so much for viewing my video. Okay, so for today, our discussion will be still on LPN, Low Power Wide Area Network. Okay, so before we start on this LPN, okay, probably I will just say, okay, so non-living thing, we know that they are not able to talk, but somehow this LPN technology give a voice to this non-living thing. Okay, for example, this dustbin over here, okay, we know that naturally they will not be able to talk. But what happened here is basically with LP1 technology, it will be able to talk. Okay, basically when it's full, it will be able to notify the user, for example, here. So this is a form of communication that make non-living thing sort of able to talk. Okay, so basically this is the technology of LP1. Okay, there are four else of LP1. Okay, so first, LP1 has the characteristics of long range. They have low power consumption. They have low throughput, which means low data rate. And they also have low cost. Okay, LP1 can be divided into two division. Okay, one group is controlled by 3GPP. The other group okay, is not controlled by 3GPP. Sigfox, LoRa are not controlled by 3GPP. LTE-N and MBLT are controlled by 3GPP. Whoever that are controlled by 3GPP will have the license band to transmit. Whoever that is not controlled by 3GPP will have the unlicensed band to transmit. Okay, I have put a table to do a very quick comparison between unlicensed LP WAN and licensed LP WAN. Okay, unlicensed LP WAN, basically they will use the unlicensed frequency to transmit. Basically this unlicensed frequency is basically can be used by anyone. Basically there's no exclusive, okay, which means that you can't stop people from using this unlicensed band. As for licensed LP WAN, they basically have this licensed frequency to transmit. And for this case, they make use of this solar to piggyback the payload. Okay, so for unlicensed LP WAN, basically any operator, okay, basically we are capable to establish our own communication network. As for licensed LP WAN, basically they are operated and managed by almost close to 900 over telecom mobile operator around the world. For unlicensed LP WAN, Basically, they use the unlicensed spectrum to transmit. And as mentioned earlier on, if you use the unlicensed spectrum, okay, you bound to have interference because you can't stop people to use this spectrum. Okay, so basically, this is the drawback of unlicensed LP when you bound to have lots of interference. As for licensed LP when, okay, basically the connections are secure and basically they are also very reliable. Okay, because they make use of exclusive frequency. For example, they can make use of 2G or the LTE to piggyback the payload. So they are secure and they are more reliable. The advantage of unlicensed LP when okay, they are having a lower cost if we compare against licensed LP when okay, the cost for unlicensed LP when is much more attractive. And as far as I know, the power consumption can be reduced drastically. Okay, because if you use a power hungry like LTE, okay, to reduce the power consumption is always a challenge. For the licensed LP WAN, okay, the QoS okay, is excellent, okay, which means that the chances for you to send the message over to the recipient is much more higher as compared to the unlicensed LP WAN. Okay, licensed LP WAN also has a slightly higher throughput and slightly longer range. For unlicensed LP WAN technology, okay, we probably have this LoRa, Sigfox, and of course many others, okay, which I will introduce more on the next video. As for the licensed LP WAN, in general, we have only LT-M and MBLT okay, for LP WAN. Okay, so as discussed earlier on, okay, the unlicensed LP WAN, we have Sigfox and LoRa. As for the licensed LP WAN, we have MBLT and LTE-M. Okay, Sigfox is a French startup in 2009, and they built the 
first Sig Fox RP went more than in 2012. Okay, Laura currently is controlled by this company called Centap. And basically, they form this Laura Alliance. And currently, there are more than 330 members on board this alliance. MBLT okay, is basically co developed by equipment manufacturer like Ericsson, Huawei, and Intel, and the solar operator like Bundufu, ATT, and DT. Okay, LT M, okay, you, you can just imagine that it's a larger version of MBLT in terms of bandwidth. Okay, so Sigfox okay, business model is to become a global IoT operator. Okay, they don't sell hardware, they don't sell software. They provide a service from the gateway onward. So MBLT is from current solar service provider. Basically, they need use of existing technology like 2G and LTE to piggyback the payload. The LoRa WAN business model is to sell LoRa chip. Basically, for LoRa WAN, they actually provide a technology that let other company like us to enable a global IoT. Okay, so with this, I would like to end my video. Okay, so please like and subscribe. Thank you.